Ta-da. Okay, hello everybody. Uh, can everybody hear me? Okay, great. Uh, let's do um, the uh, keynote file. And uh, we'll get down to work. Okay. Um, what we're going to do today is um, uh, take a look at, uh, you know, where you should be uh, today uh, in YouTube. So, um, and then we're going to be uh, talking about attendance modifications and a few homework items that we're going to reinforce. I think one is from homework 11, one's from homework 13. Okay, and then Yaz is probably going to be able to uh, talk to us uh about um uh, yes gordon campbell i can see your name uh we'll get to the names business in a few minutes uh so yes is going to talk about si i think yes are you here uh she's not here yet anna are you here Oh my goodness, Anna's not here yet either. Okay, well, we'll just soldier onward and uh, uh, talk about uh, where you should be here. Okay, if you look at the emergency YouTube diversion page, uh, you will see uh, that um, uh, we should be right down here at lecture 22. I mean, this is the 22nd, wait, we'd be on lecture 22 today if we were on campus in the psych building. So, so it, it's working out nice. And uh, so that's where we should be. Uh, it's in YouTube and so forth. And I noticed that YouTube was down for a few minutes this afternoon, but I think it's back up. Uh, so after today, um, and here's the lecture, here's a blurb sh uh, uh, screen grab from lecture 22. Um, when you're when you're looking at the YouTubes, let me just reinforce this. You have to mentally filter out all the stuff that relates to last spring a year ago. So, like their exam schedule, you know, um, their the fact that they're using clickers even in the lecture hall. You have to kind of mentally filter that out because we're not using clickers. All right. So, um, but I, I definitely want you to study the eye clicker questions. Okay. So definitely. You know, don't totally ignore them, uh, but just filter out the fact that, you know, you, you know, on the YouTube, I'm asking for clicker uh, people to click, but, you know, you're not going to be able to click, uh, you know, this, you know, this year. So uh, just try to remember that and uh, just focus on the stuff that, that we've got in our web courses area, like the syllabus page and everything like that. And that'll kind of, and the emergency YouTube diversion page. I mean, I think that's pretty much your uh, headquarters, the emergency YouTube diversion page. So, uh, all right, what are you guys talking about? I don't have any TAs yet, so I have to keep an eye on chat. Oh no, did I say three o'clock? What? Oh no, I guess I'll have to do, I'll have to do a, a redo uh, from three o'clock. Ooh, I'm gonna have to be careful about that. I thought I had it set for 3.30. Okay, no, there's plenty of people here, you know, just hush up there. I mean, we got 71 people in, in the room, so. So uh, we're doing good. I'll just have to do a, um, you know, a little, another little mini session at three, I guess. Uh, anyway, um, so that's basically uh, where you uh, 
you want to do, where you want to be lecture 22 uh, in YouTube. And homework 14 is meant to go after lecture 22. So, you know, so get, get a hold of a lecture 22 uh, and then take a peek at uh, homework 14. Now, I want to review um, a brain burner. Uh, I guess I should say the brain burner uh, from uh, homework 11. And hey, you guys, there's there's a there's a, a set of about four brain real brain burners that we have every semester, and uh, and that is um, stopping time, stopping distance, and then um, uh, heat melt heat, which is the brain burner from homework eleven, and then the third one is is to do with um, an array of electric charges. We'll get to that next week. All right. Some of you have probably have already taken a look at it. Anyways, so let's review this brain burner. Um, all right. So here's the problem itself. Um, uh, a block of ice, seven grams, and initial temperature, 270, 268 Kelvin. Now, remember when you're doing these calculations that every time you retake it, there is going to be at least one of the specs, you know, the mass, initial temperature, final temperature, at least one of those numbers will be uh, randomly changed. So uh, read carefully as you go through it. And let's, let's read this. You know, our, our main um, formula is the heating and cooling formula. Q equals MC delta T. Delta T is positive if you're heating, it's negative if you're cooling, and a negative number of calories Q. All right, so we want to read this uh, problem uh, so that we can figure out delta T. Now, it's, it, this is ice, all right, and the, the phase transition temperature for ice turning into liquid water is 273. The final temperature over here is 276, so that's a, so we've got to go from 268 up to 276 through the phase transition. So that means we have to heat it up to 273. We have to melt all of it at 273. That's the phase transition. And then once it's all melted, we have to go from 273 up to 276 in this problem. All right, so let's look for the, our delta T's. And here's our, the, the mass is constant through the process. So. Um, so let's concentrate on our delta T's. Okay, 268 up to 273. So your, your, your delta T is positive. You're heating it up. And so for this problem, that's five kelvins, right? Now, from 273 up to 276, you have another delta T, and that's three kelvins, all right? So you have... Um, two um, calculations with the heating equation, one for heating up ice and one for heating up liquid water. All right, so let's keep that in mind as we go. All right, here are the, um, here are the uh, equations over here. So MC delta T for heating up ice, and down here at the bottom, MC delta T for heating up liquid water. And then in the middle, this is the simple equation for melting uh, a certain mass of ice. This is the latent heat of fusion, L subscript F. All right, so let's take a look at what we got here. Okay, so the first heat up equation, seven grams of ice. We're heating it up five kelvins. And the specific heat of ice right here is 0 0.50 calories per gram Kelvin. All right, now if you calculate that out, it's 17.5 calories. Now, over here, the melting, all right, you're at 273 now, but you still need to add 80 calories per gram to go from solid ice to liquid water. All right, so that's seven times 80, that's 560 calories. All right, so, we, so that's part of the energy budget as well. And then finally, you're, after you've melted it all, now it's all liquid water. 
and you can now start to heat it up with you know a bunch of calories of added heat so so your uh, q equation your heating equation seven grams as before and now you have a specific heat of 1.00 for liquid water that's standard and we only have to go up another three kelvin okay so that works out to 21 calories all right and so um So your answer, you add all three of those up, 17.5, 560, and 21, you get 598.5. And uh, then if you round to the nearest um, calorie, the nearest whole number, that would be 599, all right? Now, we're going to ask for questions here in a minute, and we'll go back. Actually, uh, let's just check the answer here. Um, here's the instance that I used. And I, down here at the bottom, I typed in 599. Right, let me blow it up for you there. And I submitted it, and I got three out of three points. So that is correct for this instance. All right, now I'm going to stop this. Uh, actually, let me, uh, I'm not going to stop it. Um, let me go back a page, though. Let's go back to this page, and let's clear these blocks here to make everything clear. And now um, let me look at uh, chat. If you if you have a question about this ca calculation, uh, go ahead and type in a question. Anna, are you there? Uh, Yaz, are you uh, present? I'm here. Uh, that's Yaz? Yeah, that's Jasmine. Oh, okay, Jasmine. Um, uh, okay, do you have anything to say about SI later? Nothing, no, it's going well. I think students okay. are kind of getting the hang of it. I see some attendance. Okay, okay so nobody uh, has a question about this calculation then. Okay, uh, let's continue then. Um, and the other, all right, so there's that. And here's the actual verification that that is the correct answer, 599. Now I wanna uh, go over the calculation homework 13, uh, number two, that's the cup of tea with honey. And uh, here's the problem. You pour out 267 grams of tea which has a specific heat of about 1.00 calories, same as H2O. And it's pretty hot to start, 351 Kelvin. You wanna sweeten it with some honey of mass 158 grams, right out of the refrigerator at temperature 277. So that's kind of cool. It's not freezing, but it's, it's close to freezing point. So the specific heat of honey is 0 0.64 calories per gram Kelvin. So you want to calculate the thermal equilibrium temperature of the tea with honey mixture, okay? And as I, as I go over in lecture, there's a couple different ways to handle this. Uh, but first, let's dig out the information we need, okay? 267 grams of tea and uh, 158 grams of honey. Now, those don't change. Um, and the upper temperature, the hot temperature for the T is 351. The low temperature is 277. All right, so here are the specs for the T. And then for honey, here are the specs for it, uh, you know, from the problem itself. So what you want to do is, um, first of all, it's helpful to calculate the initial temperature gap, 74 Kelvin. Uh, and that is not zero, so that means you're not in equilibrium. So things are going to cool off and heat up. Um, the honey's going to heat up. The tea's going to cool down. And then what you want to do, and this is completely random guesses, you know, try exchanging 100 calories. You might decide, well, let me try exchanging 5 calories, plus or minus 5 calories, or plus or minus 500 calories. It's kind of hard to get 
a feel for what's a good guess. Uh, let me pause the podcast for a moment. Um, I have to uh, attend to something here. Okay. Uh, let's resume recording. And uh, hold on a second. Don't press. Okay, uh, almost back. Hold on. So Okay, so getting back, can you see the page with the tea and honey and and the blue area on the right? Okay, great. All right, I'm still getting used to this software. By the end of the semester, I'll be used to it and then we won't be using it after that. And that's the way it goes at UCF sometimes. Okay, hopefully we'll have some time for questions after this. Okay, so the honey, here are the specs for the honey. And, you know, this idea of the temperature gap is important, the initial temperature gap, because you have to close the gap so that they're both at the same temperature. But depending on the mass and the specific heat of each substance, you might be really close to 351 when they reach equilibrium, or you might be really close to 277 you know, the, the bottom end of the gap when you reach equilibrium, it just depends, or right in the middle, you know? And, it, you know, it, there's no way to, you know, I don't know a way to predict it, just looking at those numbers. Uh, so you just gotta kind of work it out. And that's why, you know, this, this idea of making a guess of how much uh, plus or minus uh, delta Q uh, you need, it's a guess. And if it doesn't work out good, uh, you make another guess, all right? And uh, if that works out better, then you go with that, all right? And this one's not particularly good of a guess, but let's work it out, 100 calories. Uh, so we're saying that the, the hot tea loses 100 calories, all right? And the uh, cool honey is going to gain, you know, whatever the tea loses, the honey gains. That's the whole idea of this exchange of uh, heat. All right, now what that does is it, it cools off the T. All right, so you have a minus 100 over here. The mass of the T is still the same, 267 grams, and the specific heat is still one. So the delta T for the uh, T, the change in temperature for the T, is gonna be negatory. It's gonna cool off. And so here's how you calculate it. So this parentheses here, is important, 267 calories per Kelvin. Uh, as long as you have 267 grams of tea uh, with a specific heat of one, uh, that uh, parentheses is gonna show up in any delta Q equation that you may use, all right? And in this case, we have minus 100 calories on the left side, and we're gonna, from that, we're gonna calculate uh, delta uh, the change in temperature for the T. But if, if I'd had, you know, 5 million, negative 5 million calories over there, I'd have the same 267 calories per Kelvin um, in my calculation. Anyway, so we have minus 100. Let's just say it loses 100. It's kind of gradual. And just divide both sides by uh, 267 calories per Kelvin, and that'll give you the change in the temperature. And as I said, it works out to a negative number. So the T drops down uh, just a little bit, a negative 0 0.37 Kelvins, right? So that changes its temperature. Um, it, it, the new temperature is 350.63. In other words, uh, whatever the initial temperature was plus delta T, in this case, 351 plus a negative 0 0.37. Uh, Kelvin is equal to 350.63, all right? Now, uh, calculating the same upward temperature change for 
um, for the uh, honey is it's very similar. You just have a plus sign. All right, so let's take a look at it. So we're going to calculate to the nearest 0 0.01 Kelvin. All right, and so here's the 100 calories. And we know that there's 158 grams of honey and that its specific heat is 0 0.64. And we're going to calculate the change in temperature from that. If you look at that equation, one unknown, delta T subscript H, and everything else is, is known. Okay. And, you know, the 100 calories, that's our guess. The 158 grams, that's from the problem. That tells you, that the problem tells you how much honey you put in the, uh, in the tea. And then 0 0.64, that's from the problem as well. I mean, you, you go and look that up. And on the exam, I'll usually, for problems like this, I'll usually give you a little table of specific heats and latent heat effusion for different substances that you, so you don't have to worry about memorizing anything. All right, now, here's our, um, here's our, uh, our, our important parentheses right here, 101.12, all right? As long as you have 158 grams of honey um, to heat up or cool down, heating up in this case, uh, you've got 101.12 calories per gram right here, right? Now, to figure out the change in the temperature, you just divide both sides by that, and you get 0 0.99. Now, look, uh, the uh, change in the temperature for the honey is bigger. It's going up by 0 0.9. That's all 0 0.99. That's almost 1 Kelvin, right? So what this tells you is its new temperature is 277.99, all right, instead of 277, all right? And so if you then make a table like this with your, um, your initial temperature, 277 at the bottom, and then 351, that's your initial temperature at the top, somewhere in between, you're going to meet, all right? And by exchanging 100 um, calories from the tea to the honey, all right? So somewhere in the middle, now I, I put some dots up here. This is two um, exchanges of 100 calories. You know, so the first one, 350.63. The next one, 350.26. And down here, the first one, up to 277.98. And then this, after another exchange of 100, 278.98. All right. Somewhere in the middle, we're going to get there. The problem is that, you know, you're going down by 0.37. You're going up by 0 0.99 with the honey. So you're closing the gap uh, by 1.36 Kelvin each time you exchange 100 calories. Now, the problem with that is you have a 74 Kelvin gap. So that's going to work out to a lot of exchanges. Your list, if you write this as a table or a set of lists, uh, it's going to be a big, long list, a big, long table. So that's, that's potential for making an error and, and not finding where your error is until you just do everything again. So this will work. But um, it'll, it'll be a long list. It'll take a big table, you know, a lot of paper, a lot of notebook paper. But you could do it. And, uh, but this shows you that, you know, my choice, my wild, crazy guess of 100 calories plus and minus uh, is workable, but it's not so hot for this problem. All right. So let's think about this gap. All right. So we've got this honey and the tea. We're adding it in there, and we've got um, a 74 Kelvin gap. And each time that we exchange 100, we, um, we close the gap by 1.36. So if you calculate 74 divided by 1.36 per exchange, that means you have to do 54.4 exchanges. In other words, uh, you, that's how big your list is. Actually, that's double the size of your list because you have 54 coming up from the bottom and 54 coming down from the top. So somewhere in, in those 108 lines or so of paper, you're going to get to the equilibrium temperature.
but that's a lot of work. Uh, so what you could do, however, is, is say to yourself, all right, 54 of these, but what if, um, you know, I've got to exchange 5440 calories total. So how about if I use that? So let me do that calculation, right? So let's say that I, I, I cut 5440 calories uh, out of my T. All right, and there's my 267 again, all right, as I told you it would be. And here's the 101.12 for the honey. Um, and so what we're saying here, and this is Q equals MC delta T again. Um, so we're dropping some 5440 calories out of the T and into the honey. And so now we can figure out the change in the temperature for this one. Now, nobody's going to guess, oh, yeah, I think I'll, I'll, I'll do 5440. You know, nobody's going to be clever enough to make that guess. At least I'm not. Uh, but if you do something nice around number like, you know, 100 or 200, even 1,000, you could, you could still get to this point. All right, so if you, if you exchange 5,440 calories, the tea, the tea cools off by 20.37, and the honey raises by 53.8 Kelvin, right? Because remember, the honey is easier to heat up gram for gram, all right? So the equilibrium temperature is 351 Kelvin minus uh, 20.37. All right, and for the the equilibrium temperature, or after 5440 exchange, uh, the temperature is the initial temperature of the honey plus delta T. So that's 277 plus 53.8. And guess what? Uh, the equilibrium temperature works out to 330.63 and 330.80 uh, for the honey. So that's pretty good. All right, that's, those are pretty close together. We can round that off to 331 Kelvin. All right, and so there's your answer on that problem. All right, now let me pause for questions and we'll go back and uh, let me take a look at my chat screen here. Um, all right, now this one's tough. This is a definite challenge problem, very difficult. You know, unless you're really patient. I mean, if you're patient, it, it's not that bad. All right, so who's got a question? Hmm. I guess everybody's left because nobody has a question. Usually at this point, people definitely have questions. All right. Um, so let me see something here. Uh, Let's just talk about um, uh, let's just talk about any questions you may have at the moment. Oh, here's a question. Good. Uh, is 5440 uh, from multiplying 54.4 by 100? Yes. Uh, Jennifer, we what we did was we calculated how much a single um, exchange of 100 calories is, and we figured out to close the gap, it would require 54.4 of those. All right, so that tells you, all right, you can either do, think of it as, you know, minute exchanges of energy, which that's actually how nature does it, uh, or one big one. I mean, if you're just trying to figure out equilibrium temperature, you know, this twigs you to the, to the uh, one big exchange that will get you pretty close. All right. All right, now I'd like to mention something about uh, attendance. And that is it, Zoom will um, 
keep track of your attendance and how long you're in the session. Uh, but it has to have um, a username uh, that I can recognize. So if you just put your first name in there, you know, like if your name is Jennifer and you don't put your, you know, that's a common first name and you don't put your last name in there, I don't know what Jennifer it is, right? If you put your phone number in there, I for sure don't know what that is, all right? So what we got to do is, uh, is at least put your first and last name in there. That's all you need because uh, everybody is unique enough. Um, Destiny, I've got you squared away, I think, for one session. All right. So, um, so what you want to do is if you had a zero, um, let me think how to do this. All right. Here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to give a uh, homework. Um, I'm going to write a special homework assignment, just one, uh, for the people that uh, blooped up there. You, well, you didn't make a mistake, uh, but uh, that you, you didn't have a, a good enough um, username for me to use for the first two sessions. Um, I'll make a special homework assignment, you know, homework X or something like that, with one question that, uh, yes, and, you know, yes, I, I, uh, I, uh, I, I, I didn't have a good username and here's my full, here was, here's my old name. Okay. So tell me your, so I'll make a homework assignment where you tell me your old name, then I'll be able to go back to your old name and say, all right, that's, uh, Susie Q. And, and then I'll be able to give you your points. Okay. Uh, so don't worry about destiny. No, don't, don't worry about the call logs. Are you crazy? I'd have to go through dozens of those things. Okay, and the answer is yes, I am gonna go back and change the grades. So the way that I'm gonna do that is make a special uh, one-time quiz, one point, one question, and you just type in your old, if, if, you, if, if your username is already good, you don't have to worry about it. But if your username was bad, um, then type in your old username, I'll go back and look at it, and then I'll know from the quiz results, um, you know, the, uh, your, your uh, uh, web course's name, and your old uh, username, and so we'll be able to get them square away, all right? And yes, Madison, every Zoom meeting is supposed to be 1.30. I inadvertently put it for three o'clock. Now, uh, we're not gonna, no, if you came today at 1.30, you're golden. Uh, you can be dismissed in just a few minutes. Actually, we're supposed to dismiss now. Uh, but if you, uh, you know, I, I'm gonna have to reopen at three, and give everybody a chance at least to check in. Uh, Fernando, if you don't know what the old username is, you're T-O-A-S-T, but it's not like it's gonna kill your grade anyway. So it's, you know, you know, getting a, a zip zap on, a, on an attendance for one of these sessions is, you know, it, it's gonna go into your grade, but it's, it's not gonna like change you from a B to an F or anything like that. The only thing that can do that is like the final exam. This is nothing like a final exam. So, so uh, try to remember, uh, and I'll just let it, you know, I'll just let the quiz, I'll give you um, several attempts at it, and then you can, you know, and it'll be open for a week or so, and you can get, uh, uh, no, you don't get extra credit if you come back in at three. Sorry. Nice try. Uh, what if you came a little late to this meeting? Uh, being a few minutes late, I can tell people that are here for the whole meeting or close to the whole meeting, you know. So, um, uh, pass fail. It's not pass fail. It's satisfactory, unsatisfactory. And yes, they are going to execute that. And I'm, I designated this class to uh, uh, to be satisfactory, unsatisfactory. If you want, you don't. You don't have to do that, but you can do that. You have to select that yourself. So, all right. Well, let's let's close the meeting and then, um, uh, George, you, you got to read the announcements. And you should have gotten this in your uh, night's mail, unless they haven't announced it to the students. But they have announced it to uh, faculty, and they said that it won't uh, affect your GPA. I don't know how they're going to do that, but. 
You know, that's what they told us. Uh, so, uh, no, I'm coming back at three. The other slackers that didn't come today at 1.30, because of my mistake, they have to come at three. And we'll have a nice session. We'll go through stuff. Uh, but Shay, uh, no, you don't have to come back at three. All right, you're good. If you're in here right now, in the sound of my voice, you are golden. All right. So um, I'll see everybody later. And uh, I'll see you on Tuesday, everybody that's in here now. I'll see you Tuesday. All right. So let's close the meeting.